Hey, it's Adrian from the Fear to Freedom Project. It is a late Thursday night, I believe. And that is somewhat appropriate uh, given that I'm doing this introduction for Holly Nelson's interview, who is a business consultant, entrepreneur, and philanthropist, and also a dear friend of mine. And I say it's fitting because she is one of the few people that I've met in the world who is on a similar journey to myself in terms of business anyway and just being up crazy hours and sort of chasing the dream and helping other people realize their dreams as well. I think that's really important. What you'll realize from this interview, even though it's about business, is that Holly is someone who's very giving. Um, she identifies herself as being very empathic or empathetic. And that is a quality that is maybe lacking in the world, particularly in the business world these days. Uh, and I met Holly unusually through pageantry. And no, that doesn't mean I'm in beauty pageants, God forbid. But one of the other businesses that I have is the pageant project, where I interview girls who are competing in pageantry. And the whole reason going into that was to find out for myself whether the stereotype of the blonde, rather vacuous girl talking about world peace on a stage wearing a crown and a bikini was actually true or not. And I'm happy to report that for the most part, it wasn't true. But the way the Instagram algorithm works to sort of bring it full circle is that Instagram shows you what you th what it thinks that you like to see. And because of the people I know and what I've been following, what I've been posting, I happened to see one of Holly's photos. And then I dug in a little bit, found out this was a time that she was competing I think it was for the Sports Illustrated, I think it's called the Swimsuit Model Shoot or the Model model Search, I think it was. And she was in that. And to enter that, she had to create a video. And in that video, she spoke about some very personal things, things that she has spoken about um, publicly, about an assault, a horrific assault that she went through. And that's when I realized that I wanted to interview her for the pageant project because even though I found that most of the girls were certainly more than a pretty face, it was still rare and it's still rare to find a pageant girl or any girl or any body who's willing to talk about something so personal and so painful. So I interviewed her through there. The first interview didn't work because of tech issues. The second one still didn't work because of tech issues. So this is the actual, actually the third interview but it's about business and that's probably fitting the way that you know God or the universe works because this interview I think has the capability of adding more value to you particularly as an entrepreneur Polly is someone that obviously I endorse her in terms of if you want to hire someone she is someone who won't just give you a social media strategy or how to post on Instagram or what time to post on Facebook as an example she is someone who can see the bigger picture. And that is something that I have noticed that people can either do big picture, but they're hopeless on implementation, or they can implement the micro and they're hopeless at the macro. And she's one of the few people that I've seen can do both. So enjoy this interview. Um, Holly is working with me as we speak on releasing the B book, uh, Ancestors with Soul this year, 2019. And I highly recommend that if you have a chance that you drop her a line and see what value she can add to your business. Hi everyone, it's Adrian from the Theatre to Freedom Project and I'm here with startup consultant, entrepreneur, and philanthropist, Holly Nelson. Holly, welcome to the show. Thank you. Say that 10 times fast. No. <laughs> I'm amazed I got through it the first time. Uh, now, Holly is maybe, let's say, not from around these parts. So why don't you start by telling us where you're from and what you're doing here? Um, I am originally from Palm Beach, Florida. Not the Palm Beach here, which even though it is very beautiful, that's not where I'm from. Um, and I'm here visiting Adrian, working on some strategy for marketing and business development for the new year. And what do you think? So first country outside of the States, that area. Mm -hmm. So first time traveling. 
Mm -hmm. Except for where I grew up. Uh, I grew up in Haiti and the Dominican Republic. But other than those two countries, I've never traveled anywhere else in the world. So uh, very uh, fun to be outside of my comfort zone for sure. And I have just been blown away by Sydney. It's beautiful here, honestly. So are you used to being upside down yet? Yes, I yes. am. It's, my head has got a little bit of a pressure, you know, it's all <laughs> coming to my head, but. <laughs> Let me ask you this. What's been the most surprising thing, I guess, about your stay here? Ooh, um, well, I guess the weather, the, the weather went from like stormy the first few days to mm. all of a sudden it was like bright and hot and that's why I'm sweating right now. <laughs> but honestly, but the weather is beautiful. It's, that's that's what I've loved about it so far. Yeah, we put on we put on a good show for you like 24 hours before you leave. Yeah. That's the way it goes. <laughs> so tell um, for the viewers watching or the people listening on the podcast, tell people what you do. So we said startup consultant, um, an entrepreneur, and philanthropist. Why don't we dig into the first one, that startup consultant, just so people know exactly what it is that you do. So I help uh, people, a lot of women, uh, small businesses, people who have ideas as well get started with their concepts, with their ideas, figuring out what their overhead cost is going to be, what financials are going to look like, um, their marketing strategy, whether or not what their business idea is feasible in the marketplace, and help them kind of develop their overall plan for their business. And you know, usually you have like a five-year plan, you have a business plan, mm. I help people kind of bring that to the market, their concepts. And then people who also have businesses that they've already launched, startups, uh, small businesses, I help them develop and grow and scale. And how, how did you get into that? Because it's a bit of, it's, I don't know if it's a niche field is the right way of saying it, but I mean, there are people who do marketing, but for like Fortune 500 companies, and then there's solopreneurs all the way on the other side who have to do everything themselves. So how did you pick the niche that you're in? Well, it kind of, I kind of just happened into it. I started off teaching myself marketing and essentially started off with nonprofits, kind of building up my portfolio, and then started approaching small businesses, local businesses in the Florida area, and then started realizing that there are people who have concepts and ideas, who have no business background, who don't know how to get them into the marketplace, don't know how to, to you know, launch. Yeah. So I realized that beyond marketing, I was actually very good at business development concepts, understanding feasibility, and so I decided to expand my services to include consulting for business, marketing and business development as well. And have you noticed any sort of common mistakes? I mean, you've worked, how long have you been in the field for now? Uh, what, it's 20, it's almost 2019, so we're looking at uh, Hasn't four been that years. long, okay. Four years? Four years, which in the online space is a, is a long time. So mm -hmm. have you noticed any commonalities or differences between the businesses that tend to succeed versus the ones that maybe tend to not succeed? No, I actually haven't really experienced any uh, businesses so far that I've consulted on that haven't succeeded. Right. But I have seen that the businesses that are tenacious and are able to pivot with their business mm -hmm. concept are the ones that usually end up excelling, yeah. really. So if you are able to have, you have a business concept, bring it to fruition, and then you see maybe a year into it that one of your revenue streams is producing more than the other and you're able to pivot your whole concept to um, nurture the one yeah. revenue stream that's doing better, those businesses end up excelling because they see that they might have gone into it with one idea and yeah. they'll come out the other end with a completely different business model. So just expand on that pivot idea because I know you're really souped up on the whole pivot idea at the moment. So what specifically do you mean by pivot? So like one idea doesn't work and you have to be able to pivot quickly and not let ego get in the way, is that it? Yeah, or, or not even ego, but just like, so you might be passionate about uh, a certain business concept mm -hmm. and product that you do. And you'll find that as you develop your business, um, maybe one of the other products that you're not so passionate about does better, or one of the services you yeah. provide does better. And, and or your business model doesn't seem to be working correctly and you've come up with a better way to do it. Instead of, I guess ego does play into it, but instead of being mm. stuck in just deciding that I'm just going to keep going at it, keep going at it, keep going at it, at some point you have to realize that you need to change your approach to things and figure out what will work better than what you've been doing. Yeah. What about, because um, I know a lot of startups are struggling for cash. Whenever you start up something, even if you have your own nine to five, initially the cash flow isn't coming in. And to take on someone such as yourself, they might initially think that they simply just can't afford it without even looking into how much it actually costs. So what, what sort of conversation could we have around that area where people aren't even willing to look at maybe bringing someone such as yourself on? What sort of added value or what sort of freedom does bringing someone on such as yourself give to that startup? 
company? So I have different um, cost models for different clientele. So one a solopreneur, someone who's a startup that might have a team already together, yeah. um, a small business that has employees and stuff like that. I have different um, price points for all of them and I scale the types of services that I do. So for someone who's a solopreneur, I could consult and give them strategy and then they execute, right? Yeah. And so that costs less because I'm not doing the execution and if they have the free time to do it, it doesn't free up their schedule, but it gives them the direction that they might not have if they don't have a background business, yeah. business and background. And for your startups, um, typically they have the money set aside for marketing, but if you bring me on, not only do you get the marketing and the marketing execution, you get the business strategy that I am you know, also able to, to give you because I will give that kind of advice as well. And then for small businesses, uh, typically small businesses can't afford to bring on a full-time employee and yeah. pay the health insurance and, and you know stuff like that. And so bringing in a consultant, you spend about the same as you would for maybe even bringing on an intern mm -hmm. at part-time, but you're getting someone who has four years experience in the field in marketing and, and business strategy. So yeah. that's kind of the advantage. Right. Now I've told Holly on I think multiple occasions that I feel like the service that I value the most is simply helping me get out of my own head. Yeah. Now, I, I'm sure it's not just me that struggles as a solopreneur or as an entrepreneur being inside my own head. So my question to you is, when you get too inside your own head, if that ever happens? It does. <laughs> how do you get out of your own head? You know, I had not had a specific way to do so <laughs> up until last year. And I did realize that it was kind of, um, it, it was at the end of last year when I realized I wanted to start my own business that I would do my stuff with, right? So. I wouldn't get in my own head when I would consult with clients on yeah. their stuff because when I would do is sit down with them, go through their strategy and talk. And that's when I would get out of my own mm. head because I had that uh, ability to collaborate, right? And then when I started working on my own personal things and I had no one to collaborate with, I was like, ooh, I'm getting stuck in my own head yeah. and I can't figure things out the way that Definitely. I would if I was working yeah. with someone collaboratively. So um, I ended up just hashing things out with friends, really. Even if they weren't business people, I would just you know, ask a friend a coffee and be like, can you just let me just like explain Vent? to you what I'm doing and <laughs> right. vent. Yeah. And then it would just happen to be that I would just start talking and I have an idea that yeah. would be a solution to something I was struggling with before. Yeah. And I, I wish I had more friends that were in business that I could talk to like that, but that is that was the starting point for how to get out of my own head. Yeah. Uh, and so that's what you do mm -hmm. professionally, the services you offer. Can you tell us a little bit about who you are sort of behind the scenes? Are you a crazy person? Are you a sane person? Like, what gets you going? Definitely I'm a crazy this person. To give you. <laughs> Definitely Take it crazy away. Person. <laughs> um, behind the scenes, I have a background in mission work. My, my parents were missionaries, so I grew up translating for doctors and surgeons, scrubbing into surgeries as young as 14, and uh, essentially just helping the people of the Dominican Republic. And that kind of gave me this background of wanting to help people. Mm. So. In my spare time, I volunteer with a lot of nonprofits, and um, specifically, I like working with businesses that have a give back business model or yeah. some type of help that they offer to their consumers or their clients. And in in my spare time, I also like to dance salsa, bachata, merengue, cumbia, all of the Spanish dances you could think of. I love how the Spanish just comes just out of nowhere. Out. <laughs> and um, I guess I've recently just started cultivating my singing. I like I always had a voice, but never really got voice lessons mm. or had any training and. So I've just been just singing for the fun of it, posting Instagram videos with no expectations, but just something that I can do for fun and to vent at the end of a, a long business day. Vent. It helps me you vent, vent when by you sing. Singing? Yes, absolutely. It kind of helps me cope with stress. So you're, you're planning on being a public speaker mm -hmm. and you sing. Which one for you is actually more nerve wracking? Would it be singing in public or speaking in public? Ooh, well, so I don't have a lot of public speaking experience mm -hmm. yet to know how nervous I would be but I I I would think maybe singing because if you are able to communicate effectively there's really nothing that someone could judge you for so yeah. you don't feel less judged but singing it's like you cannot hit a note and you're flat and then it's a little like oh my ears and then it's a little uncomfortable for people so that might be more nerve-wracking for me but I do love to sing in front of friends and family I've noticed <laughs> So, for the folks watching at home, can you give them the best details to reach you on website, social, etc.? Yes, so if you're interested in hiring me for marketing services, which I do internationally as well, you can find my website at hnmarketing.co and my social media, all of my handles for Instagram, Twitter, and um, also Snapchat is Holly J. Nelson.
perfect. And we will subtitle it all below. Okay, now full disclosure, I have interviewed Holly, and I think we've tried interviewing twice before, <laughs> in a slightly different capacity. I didn't release those, not because the interview wasn't fun, but because there were Australian birds in the background <laughs> who were louder than yourself. <laughs> Which, like, wow, that's a feat, first of all. I'm a loud individual. <laughs> I, I've had first-hand experience of this, even with the singing. <laughs> Got a set of pipes. So, I'm going to ask you the same 10 questions oh, that I asked you before. And if you remember the answers, if you don't remember the answers, whatever. <laughs> it's fine. It's actually been a while since I asked these questions. Yeah. So, I'm going to see if I can remember these questions. Okay, number one, what is your favorite word? I do remember what I had said last time. Effervescent. It means bubbly. It means like um, energetic, and, and that's how I would per, uh, describe my personality. So that's, that's my favorite word. That's pretty much spot on. <laughs> Number two, what is your least favorite word? Oh, well, I don't remember what my least favorite word was. Oh, wait, no, I do. Okay, ugly. I don't like the word ugly. Um, I don't think that it should be used to describe anything because mm. everything that God put on this earth was meant to be here. And it's, you know, human beings, animals, plants. I don't think that anything could be described as ugly, truly. I remember your answer to that. Okay, number three, what turns you on? Um, I think, I think dancing. Dancing makes me really happy. Just being able to move my body and, and singing as well. So both of those two things just make me happy. And what about the flip side? What turns you off? Um, bullying. Mm -hmm. Bullying for sure. Uh, people just putting others down for no reason not even like bullying in a high school capacity just yeah. talking down about people making fun of them or I intentionally trying to hurt them with your words or actions question five what sound or noise do you love i remember the, i remember what my answer was um the uh the bubble wrap that's an unusual one it's also very similar to popcorn i like the i like the sound of popcorn popping too <laughs> what sound or noise do you hate um the pieces of styrofoam that come inside of the boxes when you get like a the shipment of something, that yeah, squeaky styrofoam noise, oh, puts me on edge. Okay, fair enough. All right, now this question will be slightly different because I'm not interviewing you in the same capacity that I was last time, so I can actually ask you the real question. <laughs> you can give us a clue. What is your favorite curse word? Oh, jeez. If you can't say it, just <laughs> hint. Hint. Um, Oh my gosh, I don't want to admit this. <laughs> it starts with an S. Okay, we'll, we'll leave it at that and we'll <laughs> let our minds wonder. There could be many, many things. Oh shoot. Exactly. Okay, <laughs> what job or profession other than your own would you most like to attempt? Hmm, most like to attempt. Um, maybe zookeeper. I would love to work with animals. <laughs> wow, I did not. See that coming? No, I'm not sure that's not what you answered last time because that came completely out of left field. I can't remember what I answered last time. <laughs> okay, but that makes sense. I mean, you love small furry animals and I you do. love kids as well. Except for sharks. I never work in an aquarium, that's for sure. So there's some over there. <laughs> <laughs> what job or profession other than your own would you definitely not like to attempt? And don't say shark keeper. Shark keeper. Oh my gosh, keeper of the shark. Um, anything monotonous like data entry. Like if I had to work with Excel spreadsheets all the time and just typing in things. Anything that doesn't give me variety or excitement or requires movement would probably be. So, you know, maybe like accounting crazy. and yeah, data entry. Yeah. I actually think that was the same answer you gave last time. Okay. <laughs> really dislike it. Final question. Mm -hmm. If God exists, what would you like to hear her say when you arrive at the pearly gates? That I was able to help everyone that was brought into my life for me to help in the most effective way possible. And that I impacted their lives in such a positive way that it may have changed their lives for the better. Lovely. I think just on that note, I think you love helping people. Obviously, it's in everything you do, but also on a personal level, you, you love helping people. Um, do you know where, where that came from? Do you think that's just something that you were born with? Or why do you have that such a passion for helping others? I, I know that my personality type is very empathetic. Mm -hmm. And so I can see 
in people the things that they need help with and am able to answer that before they even ask for help. So inherent in my personality mm. type, I'm able to identify and then feel motivated to help them. And then I also know that growing up with my parents being missionaries, our entire lives revolved around helping people, how many people yeah. we were able to help, how effective we were at it, and um, we still do it. We still mm. do medical trips to the Dominican Republic and do free surgeries and stuff. So I feel a, an amalgamation of my personality type and my upbringing with who my parents are as well has given me that um, conviction to help people. And, and I feel like that God has given me that calling too. Mm. And I try to lace it into everything that I do. Yeah. Okay. Well. Um, Holly has given you her contact details, and just to clarify, from anywhere around the world, even as far from the land down under. It's so crazy. <laughs> this, this is crazy. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for your time. You are very welcome. Thank um, you for interviewing me. I'm going to thank for everyone for watching for a third time, and hopefully she won't get drowned out by the... Well, you call them, you call them cicadas, yeah. I call them cicadas. cicadas. Tomatoes, tomato, tomato. tomato. Potato, potato. <laughs> and we will speak to you next time. Hey it's Adrian, thanks so much for watching. Make sure to click here to subscribe. Or if you'd like to check out more of our videos, then click here. And also make sure to follow us on all our socials right here. Speak to you next. Time.